Music and sound design in games is important, because for a game to be engaging, you need clear, coherent communication between the player and the game itself, which is why this inside gameplay feels a bit off. This pairing might also come off as a bit strange. It feels completely wrong, doesn't it? These are extreme examples of course, but great games do a good job of communicating a message to the player, whether that be the tone of a relaxing beach setting or the feedback for correctly approaching the solution in a puzzle. Games will often use dynamic or adaptive music to fit the tune to the activity on screen, like how in Celeste the soundtrack will become bloated underwater, and in A Link Between Worlds the music feels warped when you merge with the wall. And there is a ton of content covering this. It's a brilliant way to draw the player closer to the experience, and it's something unique to video games. But I'd like to talk about why these things draw us closer to the experience. Why do soundtracks seem to fit a setting? Why do certain sound effects feel so tailor-made for a given action? And is there more to be tapped into here than just feel? Can a soundtrack influence how a player might approach a puzzle or a level? Well, I'm Daryl, this is Psych of Play, and today we're going to take a look at frequency and some recent research that might give us a new utility for adaptive soundtracks. So to begin, we need to establish what exactly frequency is and what it's not. In a nutshell, frequency is the objective measure of wavelength in any sound. The more vibration, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. Now, the human ear understands different frequencies in the form of pitch, which is our mind's subjective perception of frequency. It's important to know that subtle difference. It's also important to note that frequency is not volume, which is the height of those wavelengths. Higher volumes are, of course, louder, although, Higher frequencies may seem louder than lower ones. Low frequencies are very bassy and deep, whereas higher frequencies sound higher with more treble, and sometimes even come off as a little shrill. For example, the low hum of the USG Ishimura from Dead Space 2 gives off a lower, more subdued pitch, whereas the playful bantering of instruments in Super Mario World is filled with several higher frequencies. And it's not just sound tracks, but also in sound effects. Most alerts or item pickups come with a slight jingle to signal you just did a thing, and typically these register a higher pitch than the background music. So now that we've established what frequency is, we can talk about why it's such an important factor in game sound design. Sutomo Tsunaga from the Kwansai Gakuen University in Japan compiled research from several psychological studies on the effects of frequency in the background music of advertisements. There is a ton of information in this thing, so I'll post a link to the full article in the description, but here are the takeaways. Since this is a marketing article, the motivation behind the research was likely, how do we sell more stuff? Which in this case they attacked from the perspective of, how do you create a clear, coherent message using frequency? It has long been established that if your product and what it provides for the consumer is congruent with the music in the background, the advertisement will be much more effective and the willingness to pay will go up. If you don't believe me, see if this commercial would seriously make you consider paying for this insurance. Yeah! Okay, how about now? That coherence between audio and visuals is so important, not only for marketing, but for any message that we hope to communicate effectively. You may have cracked up at our example from earlier, but seriously try to imagine playing inside for the first time with this soundtrack the entire time. That incoherence is confusing and off-putting. You'd spend more time trying to figure out why there's a mismatch than you would becoming engaged in the game. It would completely derail your processing fluency, or how easily your mind can make sense of something. The easier something is to understand, the more it will stick, and the more you'll be invested. Now then, that might all be pretty obvious. Of course the music should match. So let's apply that logic to frequency. What pitch should match any given ad, or in our case, any given game? Well, it starts with associations between sight and sound. We as humans love to pair sensory inputs when they occur at the same time, because it allows us to build mental connections or associations that help us think quicker and easier. 
If we hear this, we might think that rain is on the way. If we smell smoke, there may be something burning nearby. If we hear this, we might assume something small and metal was clanked. Research shows that people often draw unconscious associations with pitches and specific situations. According to one 2014 study in the article, people tend to associate higher pitches with smaller objects like you just heard, and lower pitches with larger objects. So if I am a developer and I want to draw your attention to something small on screen, I might pair it with a high frequency sound effect like the puzzle beacon in The Witness or the item pickup in Hyperlight Drifter. Conversely, if I want to drive home the size of the sprawling caves on Talon 4, I might pair it with a low frequency soundtrack to complement the scale. Inside's actual soundtrack is another really great example of this. The camera is pulled away from the kids so that you can truly appreciate the size of the world you are exploring. So the low pitch atmospheric soundtrack really doubles down on that feeling of being alone in a massive world. This actually plays into another association found in the article, distance. Lower frequencies are almost always associated with a longer distance, and higher frequencies pair with shorter distances. And that follows. Typically, if something is loud, we assume the source of the noise is closer, and again, higher frequencies come off as louder. So Inside's soundtrack works so well not only because it's rather dreary, but also because the general frequency matches the size and distance on screen. If the camera was much closer in a platformer, a higher frequency would match. And that's exactly what we get in the fun colorful music of Cuphead. Cuphead's bosses and levels are much more claustrophobic and immediate, as you constantly work to find a safe place to stand and shoot. It's a game that brings you into a more cramped, frenzied setting, and the pitch of the soundtrack is coherent with that. Cuphead is also really colorful, just like Mario Odyssey and Snake Pass, which both have higher frequency soundtracks. And their music fits nicely again because of these associations and others. A 2016 study from the article found a strong association that matched brighter colors with higher frequency and darker colors with lower frequencies. So in regards to sound effects, this is another association that can help pin the eyes to a smaller, more brighter spot on screen, like a notification or an item pickup. So developers can use this knowledge when selecting soundtracks for their games. If you want the player to feel cramped or closer to danger, a higher frequency soundtrack is going to support that. If you want to double down on the size or dreariness of a level, a lower pitch is the way to go. But great games typically incorporate adaptive soundtracks, which means the music and sound effects will be changing a lot as the game goes on, depending on the situation. For example, a soundtrack might quickly change to let you know you're in danger. But what happens when you shift the frequency of the music subject to the situation at hand? Well, it turns out there is a bit of an interesting interaction with the size association I mentioned earlier. When they are static and constant, higher pitches pair with smaller objects, and vice versa. But interestingly, when we hear frequencies change from low to high, we will typically associate it with something growing in size. So in this part in Hyperlight Drifter, the rising frequency only helps sell the monster growing larger. We also see this in Peggle and Zelda, where building a combo stacks notes that rise in pitch to really emphasize your skill. Another utility for changing pitch is with the distance association. A rising pitch usually pairs with something getting closer, which might be why the rising pitch illusion in Mario 64's Endless Stairway works so nicely. No matter how long you run, it just feels like you're getting closer. Up to this point, we've only talked about ways to keep the communication between the game and the player clear and coherent. We can use frequency to polish the cosmetics, make a game sound and feel the way humans naturally expect it to. But the last association I want to talk about could change the way a player might approach a level or a puzzle. It might shape the way they think and prime their decision making. There is a strong link with high frequencies and concrete thinking, and low frequencies with abstract thinking. Just briefly, 
Concrete thinking is pondering only the immediate or surface level of something. What is the simple utility of something? What is it good for? In marketing, high frequency in an ad might match the utility of a drink quenching your thirst or a tool fixing a leak. Conversely, abstract thinking goes beyond the surface level. What are the intangibles, the long-term implications? What does this really mean? You might think of abstract thinking as a more emotionally driven thought process. In marketing, a low frequency might be best for an insurance ad that is playing towards the safety of you and your loved ones. So concrete is immediate and practical, whereas abstract is deeper and more interpretive. In a game, if we want to have the player think more abstractly, a low frequency is going to be best. Hyperlight Drifter's soundtrack is electric and bassy. The low pitches invite you to reflect on what the wordless story is all about. Is it a statement on society, on the human condition, or simply a sad tale? It's up to you to decide, but the soundtrack will only encourage you to think abstractly about it. On the other hand, Braid's higher pitch violin might simply prime you to think concretely about its mechanics and focus solely on their utility. So if we want our game to be a deeper, more contemplative experience, a lower frequency soundtrack might prime the player to think in that manner. And the same rules apply if we want the player to think about a problem concretely and focus simply on the mechanics and what they're good for. The Witness is a fantastic example of how you might use this adaptively. The world itself has some lower frequency atmospheric sounds to encourage you to contemplate the island. But when you approach a panel to do a puzzle and begin drawing a line, you can hear a high pitched tone being filtered in. This may draw your attention and prime you to think concretely about the task at hand. Another great example is this bit in Portal 2, where each time you get a laser to hit one of these sensors, a new tone is filtered in. This was probably done as a way to give auditory feedback for getting closer to the solution, but the higher frequencies being added might also help shape the player's thinking. Monument Ballet does something similar with its feedback. When you rotate the blocks to clear a path for Ida, you hear playful high-pitched guitar chords that prime you to think of the block's utility. When you reach the end of the level, you hear a rich, bassy tone that makes you think a little deeper. Why is Ida climbing? What does she need forgiveness for? I could go on, but these are just a few examples of how you could use frequency to prime the player to think on different construal levels. A ton of games give feedback with their audio, but I think this new understanding of frequency and its associations can bring a new utility to adaptive music and games. It's vital to make a message coherent at all times, but I think it's fascinating to consider that developers could intentionally prime the player to think about a game in a particular way, subject to what frequency is playing. But I think it's obvious that there are exceptions. Sometimes good music is just good music, and pitch is almost irrelevant. And I should be clear, these things are not foundational to making a good game. In my opinion, fun mechanics, sound level design, and balance are what makes games great, regardless of the soundtrack. Everything I've talked about here is secondary to solid game design, but I think music and using the associations with pitch will go a long way in making a game feel polished and engaging. The little things do add up, and the pitch associations are real. One thing that I didn't bring up earlier is the link between frequency and taste. When people had bitter wine while listening to lower frequency music, they tended to enjoy it much more than when listening to higher frequency music, and the opposite is true of sweet wines. This blew my mind, and though no tasting games exist yet, I thought it was important to mention because it illustrates that the human mind is weird and easily influenced by the slightest details. So yes, music does need to fit with the gameplay but real-world associations help define what that fit is. Using pitch as a benchmark for selecting a soundtrack may help create a smooth, transparent flow of communication between the game and the player. And if developers are calculated with its use, dynamic frequency can not only mold the feel of a game, but can also bend and sway our thoughts. Hey, thank you for watching. It has been a while, and I apologize for the wait. The last few weeks have been incredibly busy for my family and I, so I haven't had as much time to spare, but hopefully I will be back on a better upload schedule from here on out. So, can you think of any interesting in-game uses for dynamic frequency? Let me know in the comments below, and you might make it into the end of the next video. 
And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Thanks again for being a part of this community, and I will see you next time.